You're predicting a multi-demic. That sounds really scary. What do you mean by that? Yeah, one of the things we do by looking at this aggregated data across millions of households is we look for clusters of illness and we look how fast it's spreading, what type of illness it is. And what we're projecting for this upcoming illness season is a multidemic. Severe levels of colds. Of course, you've got COVID-19 and COVID-19 in the vaccinated will manifest itself like cold and flu symptoms. COVID-19 in the unvaccinated will manifest itself like COVID. And then, of course, you've got flu on top of that. If you look at our data closely, we're seeing now 16 states that are above baseline illness levels. I mean, if you compare this to years prior to the pandemic, they're above. Last week, that was nine. The week before that, that was six. So this, this trend of an increasing number of states above baseline illness levels. And in the under nines, in ch children under nines, we've seen that that baseline illness level is well above what, what, what we expect at this particular time of year. So why is that happening? Why are non-COVID illnesses elevated as well? We don't really know the answer to that. What we're seeing is that colds are early this year. Um, our data and other data that we, that we ingest is, is showing that there's a high level of respiratory illness. And particularly, it looks like colds are pretty severe. Um, there's this disease called RSV that typically occurs a little later in the illness season, and it's happening much earlier. Some experts believe that this has to do with waning Immun uh, immunity uh, issues because we haven't seen an illness season last season, like so people weren't exposed to colds. And given that kids under nine are seeing higher illness levels, we do expect a flu season, right? It's going to spread and there's going to be colds, flu, and COVID. Now, you used to work in public health. Why isn't the CDC saying anything about this? And, and what do you think of how they've handled the situation so far? So for the past five years, we've been kind of doing these kinds of projections. And, you know, even back in 2017, 2018, it was the worst flu season on record. We were able to see that it was going to be an extremely severe flu season months before the CDC was. The New York Times carried that story. At the beginning of the pandemic in March, uh, we saw the COVID-19 spread on average 18 days earlier on a location by location basis across the country. And the New York Times carried a whole series of, uh, of articles on that. You know, we really want to work with the CDC. I have to say that I'm a little disappointed that we're not able to more collaboratively work with the Centers for Disease Control. CDC is a great institution, but we really need to nudge them in the right way to start working more collaboratively with technology startups and with the private sector. Um, the days so, of, sorry. Well, Kinsa thermometers collect a lot of data. What trends are you seeing now there that maybe the CDC isn't seeing, especially as it pertains to Delta? Well, I, I think the number one thing is, is that there's elevated levels of illness and under nines, right? And we're seeing colds that are surging, and we're seeing these 16 states that are well above baseline, and the trend continues. And those are early insights that I think you'll start seeing in CDC data a little ways down the, down the road. So all things considered, how are we as parents supposed to protect our children? I mean, there are these mass mandate controversies, you know, they're going back to school. We want them to learn. We want them to be safe. And all of this happening at the same time that parents are being asked to return to work. Yeah, the, the, the really hard part about this coming season is the confusion, right? Because all of these diseases can manifest themselves initially like cold and flu. And so you don't know what you have. And that's going to cause a lot of chaos, a lot of uncertainty, and a lot of questions. And with people getting tested with at-home tests, it's going to continue to uh, cause questions. Some people will get them, some people won't. I think the number one thing is to take care of your kids the way that you would take care of your kids, right? Um, if they're going to, if you think that there's an illness level going around your community, or go check out our alerts at healthweather.us to see what the level of illness is and the level of risk is. Protect your kids, right? Wash their hands more. Make sure they're rested so that if they're exposed to a bug, maybe they fight it off. Um, mask when you can. Um, certainly get vaccinated. Um, you know, we also have the school health program we've run in it. We run in about 5% of U.S. elementary schools where we give away free uh, Kinsa thermometers, Kinsa apps, and the school gets special software. That program is pretty amazing. Uh, it's shown like a 27% decrease in illness-based absenteeism in years prior to COVID. Um, if your school wants to apply, you can apply at kinsahealth.com forward slash fluency to get your entire community Kinsa products. Now, we're seeing now that even vaccinated adults can get sick with COVID. If we get a vaccine for kids 
under 12 soon, which we hope we will, um, will that dramatically change the game for children? Could that dramatically alter or slow the course of the pandemic or will we still have problems? Because a lot of people will still be unvaccinated. The data is unclear about how fast illness is, Delta is spreading through children. What I will tell you is that flu, colds, if you look at the history of respiratory illnesses, all spread through children, right? Children interact in physical proximity with lots of people. You go to school, you bring it back home, parents get sick. This is just, it just happens so frequently. So my belief is that if we can get kids vaccinated, yes, it will absolutely slow Delta down. Now, the same thing is true with colds and flu. If we can get them kids vaccinated, it will slow flu down too. Um, and so again, that's one action we can take as parents is to, is to go out and get the, the COVID vaccine when it's available for children and certainly get our children uh, vaccinated for flu. There's confusion about booster shots as well. We have some new guidance there from the CDC, but what do you make of people taking matters into their own hands and getting boosters themselves, even if the CDC is saying not to, or even if you are not immunocompromised? You know, I, I, what I'll tell you is I'm going to get a booster shot as soon as I can get it. That's what I'll tell you personally. And I'm going to do that for my family, too, just to protect us and those people that are in our network that are vulnerable, our children. Uh, we have elderly folks in our network, grandparents. And so I, that's what I'm personally going to do. Um, I think it's really important, again, to just keep encouraging families, friends to get vaccinated. The data is very clear. Vaccination slows the virus down. If if you get sick, you're unlikely to get severely sick, and it's less likely that you're going to actually get it in a way that spreads to others. So, I mean, the, the data is very clear.